I wanted to come on here for just a second and talk about making money because I have recently discovered, or maybe I forgot, that especially women weren't raised to talk about making money. And I have to tell you that I had a complete epiphany in my early 20s because I grew up as a real estate investor's kid. All right. You may or may not know that my mom has always been a real estate investor. My mom has always been a kind of old, slow, boring kind of investor, though, where she'd save some money and then buy a house. And one of the first houses that she bought was a house before she got married to my dad. And then when they got married, they lived in that house. OK, so then when I came along, the house was fine. But by the time Tyler came along, the house wasn't quite big enough, you know. And a lot of people find themselves in a very similar situation. So my mom and dad found another house that was bigger on the other side of town and they got a mortgage, got approved because, you know, she could get approved for the first house that they bought, but they both went for the second house that they bought, which is very regular. Most married couples do that when they buy a house, right? So instead of selling her first house, the first house that they lived in when they got married, they just kept it and rented it. Just because it was too small for our family now didn't mean that it was too small for another family. And she could find people that would rent it and pay her more than her mortgage was. So she made a little bit of, you know, pocket money every month. And eventually that house paid itself off. And lots of people get into real estate investing just like that, where they have a house, they need a bigger house. Maybe their family grows, maybe their income grows and they can afford it, but they don't sell the first one. They keep it and they rent it. And some people do this lots of different times. Um, you might know somebody that has, I call these people bridge people because they have a bridge of houses that have bridged different parts of their life, you know? So it's not that they live under a bridge kind of people. It's that they have bridges of houses in their past. So my mom rented this house and then we lived in this other house for 18 years. And then we found another house and we moved to another house. But for those 18 years that we were living in our second family house, we, mom and dad, would save up some money and then go buy another house. They ended up, we, we had a big lot. We were still in a sub, subdivision type house. Those of y'all from Powell know the house that I grew up in. We had 10 acres. Uh, we had ponies in the backyard. We had a barn in the backyard. Our German Shepherd had a whole acre to his self and some big trees and it was awesome. Tyler had a dirt bike uh, track in the front yard because mom worked for a dump truck company and we had lots of dirt. So she had a load of dirt. That was Tyler's birthday present one year. Actually, I think mom got him a load of dirt and dad took the tractor and made little humps out of it so that Tyler could take his little uh, four wheeler or dirt bike or whatever and ramp. And that's what he got for his birthday was a load of dirt <laughs> so he could play with his dirt bike. But anyway, we had this huge yard, huge backyard and mom and dad ended up buying. There was a road. So if our house sat here, there was a road that went down like this side of our property and there was houses on that road. Well, mom and dad bought a house right there because it connected kind of where our barn was. And the thought was if we ever needed to get a direct access to the barn, we could just go through their yard and put another gate in the fence and we could be at the barn, right? But they rented that house too. And I say it's the old boring slow way of getting into investing because they literally had to buy cars. My dad would buy cars 
clean them up and flip the cars make extra money and sometimes we use that extra money they use that extra money for Christmas presents sometimes they use the extra money for water heaters and sometimes we use that extra money to buy rental houses but they would save up a bunch of money buy a house and then when they started renting it they'd be getting their money back right and lots of people think that is the only way to buy houses and it's just not true you also don't need to go to the bank to get the money to buy houses there's other ways to buy houses and start creating that monthly income without putting any money out without saving any money there's lots of different ways to buy houses but that's not what this talks about so Mom and dad were buying houses and I always knew that there was going to be money in the mailbox every month. I mean, when I was a kid, we already had one rental house and then we got another one when I was a teenager. And I knew that there was going to be a check. Sometimes there was going to be cash in the mailbox. And I thought everybody had money coming in the mailbox. I thought that's how everybody made money. I thought everybody just went out and bought houses. I was in my 20s, y'all. I was out of college. And I was sitting at mom's office when I was working for her and I was trucking and she was making the deposits on the rent checks. And I said, mom, why don't I have any money that comes in every single month? And for those of y'all that know me now and didn't know me, in 07, 08, 09, 10, 11, 12. I mean, if you've just come into my life and since 2014 or 15, you don't know this, but I haven't always had real estate completely ingrained in my brain. I mean, kind of like in the background, but not like I have it word vomit now. <laughs> so I asked my mom, I was watching her make their rent deposits. And I was like, wait a second. Why don't I have any money that comes in every month? And instead of my mom, you know, kind of sitting me down and having this good heart to heart and telling me about Robert Kiyosaki and talking about cash flow and, you know, how you invest and then you get a return on your investment and then you make money and then you pay things off. And you, instead of my mom like sitting me down and having this great big, you know, mini real estate seminar. I'll never forget it. She just kind of glanced up at me while she was making her deposit. And she was like, you have to buy something first. Go figure it out. Ah, oh, okay. Hey, I guess that makes sense. You do have to buy something. And then you make money every month off of what you bought. Okay, I guess that does make sense. But how do I get started? How do I go buy something? And that just brought on all sorts of questions. And my mom was like, um, I don't just go figure it out. Go figure it out. You're, you're smart. Go figure it out. So I did. And I went broke trying to get rich, trying to figure out real estate investing on my own. I went broke. I went all the way through my savings account, like my entire life savings account at that point um, from working a job in college, from working this job, from flipping trucks, from flipping furniture on Craigslist. I went dead flat broke. I bought two pieces of land and I bought a house. I had no plans. I had no strategies. My mom told me to figure it out because that's how my mom had gotten into it. She figured it out. And I was basically just throwing spaghetti against the wall and see what would stick. I was just making crazy offers and I was just waiting and seeing and hoping and praying that someday, somehow I would get my money back. And I did that for about a year and I was on a slow path to stay in that way and just figuring it out and staying broke. And I joined the Real Estate Investors Association in Knoxville. Victor Jernigan was up front and he was talking and he said, you know, the Knox Re is amazing. They have such great content every single month. And 
when Victor, he's the kind of man that when he talks, I'm just amazed at the stories that he's lived through and the life that he has led in real estate investing. And he mentioned that the RIA meeting was going to have a special training uh, two Thursday nights in November, November of 2013. I was dead flat broke. And they were going to be talking about lease options. Well, I knew I had a trip planned for that second Thursday, so I couldn't go to the second Thursday meeting. And I told, and Victor said the, the, it was going to be $75 and that included both meetings. And I told him, I was like, look, man, he came up to me after the meeting. He was like, Whitney, I really want you to go to this lease option training. And I was like, you don't know me. I've got a license. My mom's an investor. I'll get it all figured out. It's fine. He was like, no, it like, I really think you're going to really like lease options. You need to come. And I was like, well, honestly, I don't have $75. I mean, I'm like, guys, eating breakfast, lunch, and dinner at my mom's house because she'll feed me. <laughs> um, and it was good food. <laughs> but also because I didn't have money to go out to dinner with my girlfriends and I was embarrassed to tell them. So to save my pride, I just didn't go. Didn't go out to eat. I stayed at home and ate breakfast, lunch, and dinner with my mom. And I was embarrassed, totally embarrassed to tell Victor, who is this amazing real estate investor, that I didn't have the money. I didn't have $75 to go to this meeting. And he, I, I told him that I didn't, or I alluded to, I don't have $75. And he said, Whitney, if you'll come to this and you don't learn anything, I'll give you your money back. And I was like, all right, old man, I can handle that. No problem. I went and within 15 minutes, Bruce Barrett, who I didn't know before I walked in, but in 15 minutes, he showed me two or three deals, showed us, there was 10 people in the room, showed us two or three deals that he had been doing in Knoxville, in Oak Ridge. And he'd made more doing those two or three, what he called little deals, than I was going to make in two or three years trucking. And once you learn something, once you're open, once your mind and your life and your heart has been open to the possibilities that are out there that you just don't know about, but that there are people in your world who do know about, you can't shut that back down or I can't shut that back down. Once I realize that somebody knows how to get me to where I'm trying to get and they can get me there fast. They can give me the formulas. They can give me the strategies. They can give me the plans. They can give me the, the kick in the tail when I need that. I latch on to that person. I absorb everything that they can and I do anything and everything pretty much that they tell me to. And from November of 2013, when I did not have $75 to go to the special two night event, I only went to the first night and it only took me 15 or 20 minutes for my whole life to change. I had a serious epiphany moment at that time. To November of 2014, so 12 months later, I had completed 14 lease option deals and made like over $135,000. And that is the kind of thing that I love, love, love to see for my students, especially my lady students, because most ladies, and this is what I've just come to find out, most women did not grow up as a real estate investor's kid, but most women want their children to grow up as a real estate investor's kid. Most women want generational wealth. They want to know that when they stop breathing that their kids are going to have a real inheritance. Not that they're going to leave their kids a bunch of bills, not that they're going to leave their kids a bunch of crap, but that they're going to leave their kids with a legacy to say, mom left me this mom left me with these skills and they want their kids to grow up as a real estate investors kid. They want their kids to grow up knowing that money happens. Money comes in the mailbox every single month because we made smart investments. 
women want to pour into their children ever and men too want their kids to grow up better than they grew up right everybody wants better for their kids than what they had growing up and people will put themselves through all sorts of crazy things to provide for their kids but it goes beyond just making sure your kids have food and clothing it involves paying for them to go to private school paying for them to go to college paying for them to have tutors so that they can get into good colleges and you know make good grades at private school and it involves teaching their kids that they don't have to just graduate college and get a job that they can become a bigger better badder real estate investor than what mom was and I got a long ways to go before I catch up to how awesome my mom is as a real estate investor but I am pretty proud to tell you that I have more houses than she does and it took me three years to get those houses and she's been working on it since 1978 now she has a lot of other really cool stuff that I don't have but as far as houses, I got you, mom. <laughs> but this is this is what people want for their kids. They want a legacy. They want generational wealth. Everybody wants financial financial freedom right now, which I hate that term, by the way. It doesn't mean anything to me. But oh, good, mom's on. Hey, but financial freedom doesn't mean anything to me. Time freedom, I get. Um, the ability to write a check and go anywhere I want and buy anything I want and not worry about the discover bills I get that but financial freedom to me doesn't mean anything and I can't get I mean I could Wikipedia what it means but I hate that term just so that we're clear but I understand that people want to become investors because they want to replace the income from their nine to five I get that I understand that people want to become real estate investors so that they know they have a river of money going to be flowing to them in their retirement so that they don't have to worry about saving in a 401k or a savings account because how boring is it to watch your money just sit there it's awful it's just like watching paint dry it's awful but that's why I love talking about money I gotta tell you I love money I do I love spending money I love making money I love seeing other people make money I love money because money buys my food and I love to eat money buys my coffee at Dunkin Donuts and I love a daily Duncan money buys clothes money buys trips money money is how I tithe to the church money is how uh, Bill Gates gave 50 million dollars to Alzheimer's research this week that was money I love money I love the things that money can give me I love the things that money can't give me too but I love money and I love talking about money I love making money I love making big money I love seeing other people make big money that's what I hope and pray for you and all of yours because there's plenty of money out there there's plenty of deals to be done to make more money there's plenty of deals to make big money plenty of deals to make little money but it takes about the same effort to make big money as it does little money so let's just go for big how about that but I want to you know I started this by saying that all women didn't grow up like I did with a strong woman teaching me about money and that money comes in money happens every single month so I want to be that woman that other women need that says yes I can become a real estate investor yes I can make big money yes I can retire yes I can bring my husband home from his job yes I can do all these things because I make money I make deals happen 
And ladies, I know that if I can do it, because I'm just a small town girl from East Tennessee, pal, Tennessee, who got crazy obsessed with real estate, because real estate is not a fad. Real estate investing, buying and selling houses, building houses, developing land, buying apartments, all of that is not a fad. And it's not anything that's going to disappear anytime soon. You don't have to worry about it. Real estate's going to be there. No matter what's trendy right now, real estate's going to be there. Everybody's going to need a place to go. Everybody's going to need a place to sleep. Real estate is going to be there. And that's what, you know, people ask me, well, how did I get into real estate? Well, of all the things that I could have gotten into, because I'm the kind of person that whatever I really put my heart and soul into is going to be, I'm going to be obsessed with it. I'm going to be crazy about it. But I really hammered in on real estate because it's not going to go anywhere. I tried for a while to get into stocks and mutual funds and day trading. I tried that for like a year and I just didn't get good at it. Maybe I didn't give enough time. I tried other things. I bought and sold cars. I flipped furniture. I tried other different things. I thought about buying a screen print company one time and making t-shirts. Luckily, mom taught me out of that one. <laughs> but, you know, like I tried lots of different things before I got into real estate. But when I got into real estate, it just all made so much sense because it was real. It was real. Whatever the Internet comes out with. There's still going to be real people out there who need real estate. And it spoke to me. So if real estate speaking to you now, let me know. I would be glad to help you. I have room for uh, two one on one students. If you want to come in and do one on one training with me, I've got room for two more right now. Otherwise, you need to check out the first deal done fast program and get your first deal done super fast. I'll teach you how. It takes money to get started. But when you get out there and you get in a rhythm and you get the leads and you start doing the deals, the money comes back so fast. It's unbelievable. And from your first investment to the next 60 years of your life using what I'm going to teach you, the return on investment is infinity. As long as you use it and do it. Because it will take some work. It's not easy. It's not always fun. But I've lived through it. I have other students living through it and rising to the occasion every single day. So I know you can do this too. All right. Y'all let me know if you have any questions. I'm going to go grab lunch now. So have a great day. Let me know if you have any questions about anything. And if you need into my group, uh, I'd love to add you into our group so that we can talk all real estate all the time. And go to WhitneyNicely.com slash group to hang out with me even more. Yay! <laughs> All right. Bye, y'all. Have a great day.